Who thinks that this is an analysis of the current status of the European Union? Please raise your, raise your hands. Oh, wow. 70% of the people think that this is what is happening in Europe. In reality, these are the conclusions of American researchers about the Eurovision Sound Contest. <laughs> <laughs> it seems that the big, world's biggest uh, sound contest and the biggest union of countries in, in the world are facing the same issues. This has been already seen and analyzed by The Economist back in 2016, where they said that there are new political divides coming, there are new borders arising in Europe, and new divisions are showing across Europe, and nation-centric approaches are on the rise. This was already in 2016. We had further inputs on that. If we think that just three weeks ago, President Juncker showed and said that there is this problem. He said, I want us to do more to bring together the East and West of Europe. He also said, it's time we put an end to the sorry spectacle of a divided Europe. Our continent and those who put an end to the Cold War deserve better. So this is important because it was recognized there is the problem and President Juncker set as a priority to overcome this problem. I have to say, we as Central Europeans have an intimate understanding of these words. We know exactly what it means. We as a Central Europe program are funding interact projects that are helping people on the ground to face these challenges, to solve and to close these gaps between uh, Europe countries. So something which is really happening on the ground is people are working together. With the help of our funding, they are making possible to overcome these divides already on the ground. But maybe for you to have a little bit of better understanding of what Interact Central Europe is about, I want to show you a little a a short film. So you saw in this film some interesting statements and, and numbers, but actually what stands behind this number? What is happening really on the ground? Uh, how can a transnational cooperation project improve the life of 146 million inhabitants in Central Europe? I would like to go a little bit through what our program is doing. And to start with, I would like to talk about energy transition, energy production, energy consumption. This is a big issue, a big challenge in Central Europe. Central Europe is a very peculiar area where there is a high production of energy coming from coal and lignit. This is an important, a crucial, a crucial sector in our area, as you can see from this map, which is coming from the Joint Research Center. This map shows that there is high production of energy from coal, but also that there is a high production of CO2 at local and regional level. So what does it mean? This means that we have two main issues in Central Europe to deal with. One 
is linked to the increase of CO2 concentration, which is therefore affecting climate change. The other one is concerning the air pollution, and in particular, the production of particulate matter 10. I want to show you another map. This map is coming from the, Euro from the European Energy uh, Environmental uh, uh, Agency. You can see in this map how is the affecting the concentrate of particulate matters in, Euro in Central Europe and in European cities. Basically, you can see that in all cities of Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, and Czech Republic, there are concentrations of particulate matter 10, which are far beyond the threshold, the health threshold set by the World Health Organization. The situation is just slightly better in Germany, Austria, Slovenia, and Croatia. Also, Northern Italy is heavily affected by this effect. So, here, as you can see, this is a real problem, and there is the opportunity to, to work together between cities in order to solve this problem. Why? Because there are two options for a city. One is to act independently, to set up measures to improve air quality. The other side is to work together to solve the problem. It's obvious that this makes more sense. Why? Because air doesn't stop at borders. Therefore, it's necessary to find integrated solution to this problem. And uh, we have projects that are doing this. We have projects that are working directly or indirectly on the air quality. And I want to show you now one of these projects. This is the project AWARE. In this project, uh, cities and regions, especially urban areas of Austria, Germany, Hungary, Italy, and Poland, are working together in order to find uh, common solutions for, for actually controlling air quality. So they are working both on the side of adaptation, but also on the mitigation of uh, air pollution. On the other side, they are also setting in place smart, innovative solutions for monitoring and for informing citizens about air quality. And this project is still ongoing, but we are really uh, seeing that there are already very interesting results coming from this. As I said, this project is tackling directly air quality. We have other projects that are more indirectly addressing air quality because we have projects dealing with energy efficiency of building, introduction or promotion of renewable energy sources, greening of urban transport, which of course has an impact of, on air quality. But we have to say that when we talk about energy transition, when we talk about energy production, air quality is only one of the phases that this problem has. Another phase is very much present in Central Europe, and we, we are talking about social aspects. Uh, we have to keep in mind that 76% 76, 76 of the workforce of Europe working in the coal industry is located in Central Europe. I want, you to, I want to show you another map now, coming also from the JRC, where you see the concentration of jobs in regions in Central Europe. As you can see, this is very important in these regions. And on the other hand, in the last four years, we had 27 coal mines that closed down. What does it mean? It means that the regions affected by that, they have problems of energy provision, they have problems of air pollution, they have social problems because people lost their job. And there is the need to adapt their job to the new situation, to the new market, to the new labor market. I mean, if you had a look at the news, maybe in Germany in the last, in the last days, you could see that this is a very urgent issue in many areas, in, in, especially in Germany. But this is an urgent issue everywhere. And how can then a transnational program help that? The solution stays in finding an integrated approach at the local, at the regional level, in order to, to on, one hand, on one hand, to deal with the urban dimension, for example, to, recon to uh, uh, convert abandoned industrial areas, brownfield. On the other side is to work on the skills of people in order to increase their, their capacity to find a new job. On the other side is to work on the environmental issues. I would like now to show you another example of how a middle-sized city managed to make use of transnational funding and uh, uh, funding coming from Central Europe in order to start up with new investments, with new approaches, with innovative solutions that were already implemented in other parts of Central Europe. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present you the example of the city of Bitkosz in Poland. The 
Bydgoszcz uczestniczy w ośmiu projektach skierowanych do Europy Środkowej. Projekty są bardzo różnorodne, obejmują zarówno kwestie współpracy w zakresie kultury, dziedzictwa kulturowego, ochrony środowiska. Ich bardzo dobrą cechą jest to, że angażują nie tylko urzędników, rozszerzając ich możliwości współpracy z, ze środowiskami z całej Europy, ale też angażują mieszkańców Bydgoszczy. Projekt Cobra Man dotyczył zarządzania terenami poprzemysłowymi. Jego głównym celem było tworzenie stanowiska w, dla instytucji publicznych, menadżer do zarządzania terenami poprzemysłowymi. W Bydgoszczy zajęliśmy się zanieczyszczonym terenem, na którym teraz stoimy, który wcze, na którym wcześniej e, znajdowała się fabryka Papy. Zrekrutowaliśmy ten teren, zagospodarowaliśmy go na cele rekreacyjne i do tej pory jeszcze monitorujemy, co się dzieje pod ziemią. Kontynuacją projektu Cobra Man jest projekt Greener Sites. W Bydgoszczy upadły ogromne zakłady chemiczne. Teren po tych zakładach chemicznych jest przedmiotem działań pilotażowych w projekcie Greener Sites. Chcielibyśmy zbadać wpływ tego terenu zanieczyszczonego na tereny sąsiednie zamieszkałe Łęgnowa. Bardzo się cieszymy, że możemy uczyć się od innych partnerów w tym projekcie, którzy również borykają się z podobnymi problemami i mają w swoich miastach ogromne tereny poprzemysłowe. So you see, a city of 350,000 inhabitants managed through European funding to transnational cooperation to set up, some, to launch something important, which has then been complemented with external uh, funding, with other investments. So they, we started something in this city with Central Europe already in the 2007-2013 period. Now it's going on, it's further developing. This is just an example on how at the regional and local level transnational cooperation in Central Europe is working. Uh, of course, energy transition, energy challenges go hand in hand with economic challenges. Uh, globalization, industrial transformation, but also competitiveness of regions and innovation of companies are crucial key aspects, crucial key challenges in Central Europe. We have to keep in mind that Central Europe is home of key industrial players of Europe. Automotive sector is very strong in Central Europe. We have to keep in mind that in cent Central Europe is a barrier center of the European in, uh, advanced manufacturing sector. And therefore, there is the need to work and to cooperate in this field because there are ex enormous potentials. I want to show you a little bit also another interesting analysis done by The Economist, where just very recently, in July this year, they recognized that Central Europe economies are well on track for sustainable growth. But there are also, they said that there are also uh, reasons to worry. The first one is lack of innovation of local companies. The second one is the coming demographic squeeze. So there is the need to work both sides. How companies are innovative and manage to go to more profitable sectors, so industrial transformation, the other side is to work on the skills of the employees and the skills of the entrepreneurs. And this is exactly what our Interreg Central Europe projects are doing to, through transnational cooperation. For our organizations, business support organizations in Europe and Central Europe, cooperation is central in order to help uh, companies to be more innovative, in order to help entrepreneurs to be better, to manage better their companies, in order to help people and employees to work better and have better skills. And this is exactly what our uh, what is needed in this area. On the other hand, I want to show you now this map coming from the Regional Innovation Scoreboard. Central Europe is a very peculiar area where we have coexisting regions which are innovation leaders. You see this dark green or light green, they are strong innovators. And then we have regions which are lagging behind in terms of innovation. Here, this is another risk. There is the need, again, to transfer knowledge, to work together in order to help the less advanced regions to close the gap through transnational cooperation in order to get to uh, higher investment in R&D, in order to have companies that then can work globally on the market because otherwise each region singularly cannot face the global challenges. And again, our projects are doing that. We have projects that put together efforts from different countries in order to develop 
new ideas how to support innovation on the local level. I would like to present you now another project that we, have, we are currently funding and it is currently implementing. This is the project Nuclei. The Nuclei project aims at manufacturing companies from the Central European area key area for manufacturing in Europe and we all know that manufacturing is the backbone of the European economy. What do we want to do? We got together nine clusters from all the Central European countries and we are teaching them how to support companies coping with the revolution of the 21st century. Industry 4.0, Internet of Things and Big Data. Digital transformation is a, a really important term today, especially for Central Europe, because we are strong today in the manufacturing industry, but digitalization is totally different. Yeah? Um, there's a big digital transformation and we have to bring people together that they understand what it means and how to cope with this situation. We are organizing a lot of events, which is really good to bring people together and do new things. So, you heard how cooperation is central to increase innovation of our regions. However, cooperation is central also when we talk about when it is the time to distribute goods around Central Europe. There is the need for companies to receive raw materials. There is the need for customers to receive the finished goods. And this should ideally happen in an environmentally friendly way. On the other hand, Central Europe is affected by uh, a, a, a very, very strong challenge. Back in 2004, when there was the enlargement of the European Union, at the same time there was a decline of uh, transport on rail. So the transport started again to go back on road because it was more convenient. Now it's time through a network, a smart network of infrastructure to move back through intermodality, transport of goods and uh, uh, shifted transport of goods from road to rail. Uh, we have to keep in mind also that Central Europe is an area which is crossed by nine of the 11 uh, uh, 20 corridors existing in Europe. One of them, the Baltic Adriatic Corridor, this one, this one in blue, is also entirely included in the Central Europe area. So there is the need now, there are two needs basically. One, to better infrastructure this network, of co this corridor network. The other side is to close the gap between remote regions and the network. Our projects are working on that. They are exactly doing that. We have two projects, which they are called Sonora and Batco, that are working on the Baltic Adriatic Corridor in order to, they were working in order to recognize, to let this corridor recognized by the 10T network. This they managed, and this meant, meant to have for the key stakeholders located in this corridor to have access to the Connecting Europe facility, so funding for implementing the, the hard infrastructures. But not only, these projects managed to prepare directly 2.1 billion euro of investments in this corridor. So you see, again, transnational cooperation, little tiny projects that are making something bigger, something that remains afterwards. And this is exactly what they are doing. But this is just the side of the infrastructure. Then there is the side of the services, the side of smart services for, for companies. We have a project which is currently undergoing, which is called TalkNet. This project is exactly working in closing the gap between remote regions and transport corridors. This project is setting up smart solutions, smart service transport and logistic between the Baltic and the Adriatic. This project is running, but still this project has already great results. To give you an example of one of these results is that IKEA will use the services coming from this project in order to set up their logistic distribution chain between the Scandinavian countries and the Mediterranean countries. It's a great result, it's a success of transnational cooperation and this is still ongoing. So this is transport. We saw also economy, we saw energy transformation. 
all these activities have, as we said, as we, it was already said during my speech, heavy impacts on the environment. I would like then, therefore, to, to close the circle and go back to environment, and in particular to the challenge of climate change. I would like also to link, ideally, with the motto of the current Austrian presidency of the European Union, which is a Europe that protects. Through our inter central Europe projects, cooperation is central to protect citizens from uh, effects of, of climate change. And let's say one of the most visible effects of climate change in our area is flooding coming from heavy rainfalls events. I want to show you now a map. This map is coming again from the European Energy Environmental, uh, sorry, European Environmental Agency. And this is a prediction of heavy rainfall events in this century. You can see from this map, from the dark green areas, that Central Europe will have an increase of heavy rainfall events up to 35%. This is enormous, because this will then result into enormous floods, people dying when they are close to the river and the, and the lakes, companies losing their production settlements, enormous damages. We have also a track story of floods in the last 40 years, where we see that Central Europe is particularly sensitive to the problem of floods. Again, how the regions and the cities can work here? They can work independently. They can build up more barriers for the floods. But then what happens? The problem just goes downstream. Or cities and regions can work together, coordinate between each other along the river in order to solve the problem. And this is what our Interact Central Europe pro program is funding with their projects. We have projects that are working on that. And now I would like to show you another last example on how a small city in Germany could make use of transnational cooperation for facing a very local problem of flooding together and in cooperation with all the other cities and uh, irrespective of the borders across the river. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the case of the city of Görlitz. My name is Uwe Rastetzky, I am the leader of the Feuerwehr in Görlitz in Deutschland. Görlitz liegt an der Neiße. Die Neiße ist ein Vorgebirgsfluss und sie hat die Besonderheit, dass bei einem Hochwasser die Neiße schnell ansteigt, schnell hohes Wasser führt und dieses Wasser auch schnell wieder abfließt. Das Hochwasser, was 2010 Görlitz heimgesucht hat, war eines der höchsten Hochwasser der letzten Jahrhunderte. Wir hatten einen Wasserstand von ca. 7,20 Meter und wir konnten dieses Hochwasser nur bekämpfen mit einer entsprechenden Ausstattung. Von dem Projekt Label konnten wir während des Ereignisses das Programm Inge und das Kartenmaterial nutzen, was uns sehr geholfen hat. Dank dieses EU-geförderten Projektes sind wir in der Lage, die Bevölkerung meiner Heimatstadt Görlitz vor Hochwasser zu schützen, was mich als Feuerwehrchef dieser Stadt sehr froh macht. You see how cooperation is central to deal with this issue. You see how cooperation, transnational cooperation, is working at the local level, on the ground, irrespective of whatever political statements, because people need to work together across Central Europe to close these divides. This testimony, testimony is very interesting, it's very relevant, but in spite of all this you could see until now, we have still problems. The latest Eurobarometer could capture the fact that Euroscepticism is on the rise in seven out of the nine Central European countries. This means that more needs to be done. More needs to be worked out in order to build trust of people, in order to build cohesion on the ground, as our projects are doing. In other words, there is the need to continue cooperation in Central Europe, or, as we love to say, to take cooperation forward. And this is of crucial importance for this area of Europe and for the entire Europe. So far, with this program, we funded 85 projects. These 85 projects are working on the ground with people 
which are really needing the, to, to work together. I want to show you now a last map where you see how these 85 projects and nearly 1,000 partners that are working together, how they are cooperating, how intense is their cooperation. It's impressive to see, isn't it? It's really, you see how transnational cooperation is building bridges on the ground, is building cohesion on the ground. And ladies and gentlemen, let me now conclude, going back to the beginning. With transnational cooperation, we can finally help closing all divides, all borders that are there, but also to face new devices that are coming up on, the, uh, on our Central Europe area. Once and for all. This is something that only transnational cooperation can do. Thank you very much for your attention.